finance officer or step into their office. First, you are not obligated to buy or pay for anything they offer in the finance office, no matter what they say, including additional dealer fees. And secondly, the finance man is obligated by the owner of the dealership to sell you products to boost dealer profits. Everything you hear out of their mouth is to make the dealership money. Many of them will say anything and everything and even violate state law to get you to add profits to the car deal. The process is designed to slow things down, to wear you out, to get you to sign your name on inconsequential documents so they can have you nodding your head yes when it really counts. Let's get started. Number one, rust proofing. It's a proven fact that a new car coming off an assembly line anywhere by any automaker does not need rust proofing. In fact, several automakers actually void the factory corrosion and perforation warranty if the car is undercoated by a third party. The reasons are quite simple. Dealer applied undercoating have been known to plug drain holes designed in body panels, thus preventing them from getting rid of water accumulated from rainfall or other exposure to moisture. When a body panel cannot drain, no amount of coating in the world can save it. So why do dealers sell it anyway? Simple. Huge markup. Dealer applied undercoating ranges from 300 to as much as 1500 depending on the car and the Good morning, everybody. package they offer you. Appreciate you guys joining me uh, this morning. Um, we're going to wait for a couple more people to drop up in here, but we got some stuff to talk about. As you can hear in the background, we got some stuff to talk about, man. What's going on, Kyle? What up, man? Jimmy, good morning, champion. Brian, good morning, champion. How you doing this morning? Hey, everybody, say good morning and let me know where you are viewing from. Damien, good morning, champion. How you doing, man? Appreciate you being on here. Good morning. Problem solved. Hundreds of dollars saved. Number three, paint protection. Do you hear this garbage? Paint protection. Amanda, good morning. This stuff is used in the aerospace industry. Amanda, this stuff is what's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. It's crazy. Sounds amazing. Brandon, good morning, champion from Austin. Robin, good morning. Ari, good morning. I hope I said that right. Good morning. James, good morning from New Jersey. Gail, good morning to you. Good morning, champion. East of Cleveland, good morning. Belvedere, Illinois, good morning. We're gonna give it a couple of more. A, 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 we're gonna give it a couple of more minutes. Let some other people drop in here. Then we gonna talk about it. We gotta we gotta talk this morning. We gotta talk this morning. They trying to kill F and I. You hear this? And they call the ones that do thieves or crooks. They are right. VIN etching is nothing more than an adhesive stencil containing the vehicle identification you hear this? or VIN, as they call it, of your car. However, Jason, you good morning, champion. Product, Spencer, good morning, champion. Car with it that it can't be uninstalled, that you must pay good for it. This is all nonsense. There are tons of claims about VIN etching, and most of it is bogus. So why do they sell it? Again, pure profits. Window etching is commonly sold from 250 to as much as 600 bucks, and sadly, most consumers have no idea they even bought it. For those of you who think you still need it, you can go online, buy the kit yourself for 20 to 40 bucks, and install it in 10 minutes. Number five, gap insurance. Gap insurance is one of the most abused legitimate insurance policies in the car business. Dealers try to sell to everyone and commonly include it in what they call preferred protection packages. Here's what it does. Gap covers the difference between actual vehicle value and your loan balance if you should happen to total your car. With so many people being duped by savvy finance officers, it's become a common problem to have a loan on a car that's greater than its actual value. Overpriced dealer gap adds to the inflated loan balance by stinging you for an additional 300 to 750 bucks. If you really need gap, talk to your own insurance provider first. You'll find out they sell it for 30 Amanda, I'm with you. a year. Hopefully, I'm with you. You're a bit smarter. I laugh when I saw it too. You don't even need gap. Number this guy's a clown. Extended warranty. This dude's a clown. Warranties are another commonly abused dealer product. As a dealer option, extended warranties can be a good thing in some cases, but to a very limited number of car buyers. Starting at $1,000, they can easily climb to several thousand bucks. Here are the problems. First, finance offices routinely lie to buyers claiming that the bank wants you to have one. Or, they tell you this is what most people go with. They're lying, and they're not looking out for you. And secondly, many warranties aren't worth the paper they're written on. 
I have been personally involved in several cases where full coverage warranties only paid a fraction of the cost of repairs. First of all, it's an extended service contract, moron. Entirely destroying their credit in the We gotta dive into it this morning, champions. Jed, good morning. What happens when you believe the wrong people? Here's my suggestion. I have never bought an extended warranty. I suggest you consider cars that have great service Idiot. reputations, have your car inspected before you buy it, and then put a few dollars away in a savings account if you should ever need it. I've never regretted doing this, and neither will you. For most people, these three simple steps will provide greater protection in the long run than most extended warranty plans you find at a car dealer. A final note on extended warranties. If you're watching this video and you've had a great experience with a given type of extended warranty in the past, please list it in the comments below so that other car buyers can make better choices. Knowing who the good warranty companies are is all... All right, champions. All right, champion. Let's, uh, let's dive in here. I'm sick of listening to this idiot. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done listening to this idiot. All right. I'm done listening to that idiot or idiots like him. Right. What we have to understand, what, what, what we're going to have to understand about the marketplace is that idiots like this dude exist and they are spewing such negative garbage about the F and I department. And here's the issue. Customers are buying it. If you look at the comments on this dude's YouTube page, I can pick any comment out there and they're all in agreement with this guy. Hey, uh, I wanna, I, I'm glad I saw this video before I ever went into a finance department. I know that they're going to try to sell me some stuff. I know that they're going to try to increase my rate. I know that they're kind of going to try to increase my payment and it's all profit to them. Right. If you look at the if you look at the comments, this this specific video was posted March 18th of 2017. And this video has over 2000 views. I mean, I'm sorry, not 2000 views. My mistake, 200,000 views. So a couple uh, idiot like this spewing this negative garbage things that he, he's spewing things that you and I both know to be untrue. We don't sell extended warranties. We sell extended service contracts. And it's not sham. What we sell are not sham. What we, what we sell are not worthless products. But we, in fact, sell products that help customers, that benefit customers, that are there for customers in emergency situations. But this dude, th this is not what he's saying to get attention. What he's saying is he's playing into customers' fears. Right? He's playing in the customer's perception. He's playing in the customer's fears. That's all he's doing while he's trying to get attention. Right? He's talking about us being crooks in the finance department. Right? He's talking about us being scam artists in the finance department. He's talking about the underhanded stuff that, that we do in the finance. He, he's making it seem as if we're all scam artists, as if we're all crooks, as if we, they, as if his purpose was to kill the F and I department. And I want you to take heed of this this morning. I want you to take, I want you to take heed of this this morning. Couple this person, right? Cause he's not the only one. He's not, and I'm not going to say his name because I think he's an idiot, right? I think he really don't know what he's talking about. Right, I think he's just uh, seeking attention. But I want you to think about this for a second. He's not the only one. Him coupled with people out there talking about they should get rid of the F and I department within the dealership. Right, they should have salespeople who do cradle to grave sales processes that include the F and I department. Right, they want to cut F and I completely out of the dealership process. Right. So couple this idiot along with a cradle to grave sales process that people go out there and preach about. And then on top of that, couple people who have these nationally syndicated shows like Dave Ramsey, Susie Orman, Clark Howard that tell consumers who listen to them. Listen, when you go into F and I, when you go into that car dealership, don't you buy none of that stuff. Do you see what we're up against? This is why the name of this video is Kill F&I. Because that's what these people want to do. They want to kill my beloved F&I department. They want to kill your beloved F&I department. They want to kill the most profitable square footage in the dealership. Yes, I said it. The most profitable square footage in the dealership. 
Now, along with it being the most profitable square footage in the dealership, guess what? It is the department that protects the customer, the customer's vehicle, and the customer's loan. It is where the customer can go and take advantage of protections on the money they just spent, on the product that they just bought. Would you agree? This is what you have to understand. See, we're, we're not only the most profitable square footage in the dealership, we are the protection we are the protection department within that dealership. Without the F&I department, the customer doesn't get any protection. Would you agree? The customer doesn't get that gap protection that, in fact, pays off the loan in the event that that person got into an accident and totaled the vehicle. Without the F&I department, the customer doesn't get that gap protection that pays the deductible in addition to 150% of retail. Right? If there's no F&I department, then guess what? The extended service contract, the customer can't buy one. Right. So if that customer is in Phoenix, Arizona from Washington, D.C., and that customer happens to break down and is on side of the road at 1130 at night. Guess what? Without the F&I department, they don't get they don't get the extended service contract. They don't get the benefit of rental car. They don't get the benefit of towing. They don't get the benefit of having towed to a certified um, or licensed repair facility so that the parts of the labor can be fixed. See, they don't get that benefit. But that's not what this idiot is talking about. And that's what not that's not what other people are talking about. What they talk about is don't you go in there and spend that money. Don't you go in there and buy none of that stuff. They're going to try to sell you some stuff. They're going to try to increase your rate. They're going to try to pull some underhanded stuff. Right? What we have to do is is you and I as they're trying to kill F and I, what you and I have to do is we have to combat their misinformation. We have to combat the fear mongering that they're doing to customers. We have to show the customers the value. We have to not only show the customers in the value of the product, but we have to show customers the value of the F and I department. Get it? We have to, we have to change the way that we do things back in F and I. Listen to me. This dude published this video in March of 2017 on YouTube and has almost a quarter million hits already. By the end of the year, can you imagine? By the end of next year, can you imagine? Right? And you have to think about something. The same, we have to change the customer's perception and we can't do that if we're doing the same processes that has been done in F&I over the last 20, 30 years. Right, and we can't do that when people are going to F and I schools and listening to F and I trainers who teach the same stuff that they taught 25 and 30 years ago. Right, if we continue to do the same things, and guess what? We play right into the hands of people like this idiot. Right? Why? Why would you do the same presentation that customers could go on YouTube and see? Why? A customer could go on YouTube and see a, 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 a 17 million different variations of a menu presentation. Why would you still do it? If you listen to this guy, this idiot, um, if you listen to his video, he talks about a preferred package. And I guarantee you some people in the F&I department today are going to say, hey, uh, uh, which one of these works best for you? And here in the preferred package, Right? We have to change the way that we do things in F&I. This is about skilling up. This is about taking F&I to the next level, right? So that we can supersede what these idiots talk about, right? We are a target within the car dealership. They want to kill F&I. They want to kill F&I. They want, they want the sales department to not only sell the car, to not only make the phone calls, to not get the customers in, to not only sell the cars, take the customer for a test drive, do the walk-arounds, come back in, sit the customers down, do the negotiations with them, come to a conclusion on the down payment, on the monthly payment. But then they also want the, the salesperson to go into back-end product. Right. They also want salespeople to discuss the finance department. Right. The products in the back, the terms, right, the rate, the bets, etc. Right. They want to put the all the responsibility of F&I on the salesperson. Why? Because they're trying to kill F&I. Why? Because we're such an easy target within the car dealership. And we we have to protect the values of the F&I department. We have to bring the honor of the F&I department back to the forefront. Right? Why? How? By doing it differently. By doing it differently. 
right? By being a different F&I manager, by being the most different F&I manager that a customer has ever seen in the last 20, 25, and 30 years that they went into car dealerships to buy cars, right? We got to be different. This is 2000. We have to be modern because this is 2017. And in 2017, we still got people like this dude spewing negative nonsense to the consumers, out in the marketplace, we got to be better. We got to be better than this person because people like him aren't going away. People like him will always fear monger, right? People like him will always spread fear to customers. People like him will always play into their negative perceptions about F&I managers. And we have got to be better. If they've been looking at menus the last 20 years, why would you do it again? If they, if, if F and I managers been talking about preferred packages for the last 20, 25 and 30 years, why would you do it again? Right? If the, if the F and I managers and the F and I department have been the most elusive department in a dealership over the last 20, 25 and 30 years, if we have the worst percent, why would you do it again? Why today would you do what they did 20 years ago in F and I? Why not do it differently? First of all, we've got to be, we have to fully disclose all information and we have to make ourselves familiar to customers. Shaka, what do you mean by that? What I mean by that is 20 years ago, finance people didn't meet customers until the customers walked into the finance department. Until after they agreed to purchase the vehicle, until after they spent five hours on the showroom floor negotiating on the payment, right? Till after they spent five hours negotiating on a down payment, that's when they got the opportunity to meet the finance manager and the finance department. And guess what? You know what their perception at that point in time was? My payment is going to go what? And my payment is going to go up because the finance people in the back are going to try to sell me some what? They're going to try to sell me some stuff, right? That was the process 20 years ago in F&I. We've got to be different. We've got to become familiar to the customer. What do I mean by that? Get involved early. You as a finance manager, if you're not busy, should never be in your F&I office. You as a finance manager should own the showroom floor. You are the best salesperson and the strongest closer in the store. We're not better than salespeople on the showroom floor, and we're definitely not more important, but we in the back sell non-tangibles. We in the back have to close customers who come in with 100% resistance and 100% objections. So when I say we're the best salespeople, I'm not taking away from the most valuable salespeople who are on the showroom floor, because without salespeople, we don't exist. I definitely acknowledge that. But when I say we are the best salespeople and the best closers in the store, it is a fact because we are selling things that you are non-tangible. You can't touch it. We are closing customers who walk in and resist 100% of the time based on bad past experience and based on perception and reputation of F&I. They come in loaded with objections. And guess what? Guess what we do? We tell them the same thing that they heard 20 years ago. Oh, the Colombo close. Wait a minute. Right? We're doing the Colombo close because this is what F&I trainers and, and F&I schools are still, are still teaching F&I managers. Right? They're still teaching them the 99% close. Right? Like customers haven't heard that 19 times, the last 19 times they purchased the vehicle. It's try, it's time to do something different. It's time to handle F&I and put F&I into a different light. It's time to take it up to the next level. Right? We have to combat it. When Susie Orman tells her audience, listen, don't purchase an extended service contract. When this guy says, hey, don't purchase an extended warranty. Put the money aside, put the money away, and if something breaks on your vehicle, take that money and fix what breaks, right? But what he's not telling customers is, listen, an extended service contract repairs unlimited repairs, makes unlimited repairs, pays for unlimited repairs over the term. 
So what that means is, is in four years, if a mechanical failure happens that's covered under the service contract, they pay for it. And guess what? In five years, if another one happens, they pay for it. And in six years, if another one happens, they pay for it. In addition to that, they pay for the towing. In addition to that, they pay for the rental car. And in addition to that, some service contracts have trip interruption. So if you're out of town, they pay for your hotel and your lot. They pay for your hotel and your meal. See, that's not what he's telling them. What he's saying is, well, if you don't buy the service contract, just save the, the two grand. Just save the three grand, put it to the side, and if something happens, spin that, come on now. We all know that customers don't put away two or three grand and just save it for repairs. What happens is, is if the customer leaves and they're not protected, they, they're not going to put the money aside to protect themselves. Right. What he's saying is what he's not telling you is, is that this service extended service contract is going to cover the labor rate at today's rate. And in two years, if the labor rate goes up, it's going to cover that rate, too. That's not what he's saying. He's fear mongering. And you and I, you and I have to combat these things. They're trying to kill F and I. We have to bring the honor back to F and I. How do we bring the honor back? First of all, we fully disclose everything. OK. Customers want to know price, they want to know payment, they want to know term, they want to know interest rate with no product in it. That's what they want to know. That's the reason why they come to your dealership and they battle and they and they sit out there for five hours trying to get to $300 a month, right? The, the, the sales desk is at $325, right? The customer wants to be at $299 and they agree at $300. Right. This is why they spend all that time. And the bad perception is, OK, when it goes back to finance, the rate is going to go up and my payment is going to go up and they're going to try to sell me some stuff. We got to take a different approach because 20 years ago, guess what? They didn't they 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 they, they didn't this all people didn't disclose all information to customers 20 years ago. Right. All F&I managers didn't disclose all the information. Some of them did, but not all of them. Right. That wasn't the practice. We have to make that a, pro a part of our process in our dealership. We have to make that a part of our culture. That when you come to this dealership, you're going to get all the information. Absolutely. We're going to roll out the red carpet for customers. Absolutely. You walk into the F&I office and guess what? Here's your sales price. There's your down payment. There's your term. There's your rate. Right? This is, the, this is your finance charge. Right. We got nothing to hide. Why? Because we're the finance department. We're ethical in the finance department. We don't sell snake oil. We sell products that that will be there for you in an emergency situation. We, in fact, sell value. And I'm not going to show you a menu, folks. I know you've seen a menu the, at the last 30 times you bought a vehicle. I'm not going to do that to you this time. I won't make you go through that this time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some value and allow you to either accept or decline it. Let's roll. Right. This is a different approach that you have to have. You have to not ignore concerns, but you have to answer all questions, address all concerns, be completely upfront with customer. Because guess what? Profit is not a bad word. Profit is not a bad thing. And listen to me. Profit is something that customers understand and are willing to pay as long as they see the value in paying you for the profit. Right. As long as they see value in paying you for your service. Right. As long as we're changing the paradigm that customers have about F and I, as long as we're changing the perception that guess what? They don't mind paying us profit. They understand that we got to keep the lights on. They understand that we have families that we need to take care of. But it's all about the process and the presentation. We can't do it like they did it 30 years ago. They can't do it. We can't do it like they did it 30 years ago. 30 years ago, the bad reputation and perception was, was earned. And if you are been in the, I've been in the business. Oh, I've been in the business 25 years. I've been in the business 30 years. I've been in the, in my, in my 18 years. And if you're one of them people, then listen, you're the person who's so focused on how long you've been in the business rather than how much value you're bringing to the uh, table currently. I need you to change perception. Right. This is about bringing honor back to the F&I department. That's what this is about. This is about getting the customer to walk inside of a dealership and feeling comfortable about going back to that F&I department. Why? Because immediately when they walk into the dealership, first, one of the first people they're going to see is the finance manager. Hi, folks. My name is Shaka. 
welcome. I want to welcome you to the to, to, to the Toyota dealership. This is Steve. He's your salesperson. He's going to definitely take care of you on the vehicle. He's going to show you the vehicle that you want to see. He's going to take you for a test drive. He's going to answer all your questions. And listen, if you happen to have any questions or any concerns about anything in reference to the finance or the part after you purchase the vehicle, please don't hesitate to have Steve holler at Shaka. And he can just stand in the middle of the showroom and say, Shaka! And I'll come running because ain't nobody in the dealership named Shaka but me. Come on with it. Again, welcome to the Toyota dealership. Make it fun for the customer, right? You don't have to stand in the middle of the show and yell. I'm exaggerating, but what I'm saying is, is that you can be upfront with the customer. The customer can like you in the dealership. The customer can get familiar with you. The customer can be comfortable with you before they ever get back to F and I. Right, you can address customers' concerns so that when they walk back to the F and I department, they they don't have all this resistance. They don't have the wall of resistance. They're not ready to combat. Right? They don't have all the objections. If you are addressing, if you are addressing their concerns throughout the sales process, then guess what? They're a lot more comfortable when they walk back into F and I. Right? But that's not what they teach you. No, no. That's not what they teach you in the F&I school. That's not what they teach you, these F&I trades. That's not what they teach you, right? They want you to Colombo close them and 99% close them, right? They want you to, can you see? Well, can you see how a large unexpected future repair? Come on, man. Customers are not dumb and we have to change things. Bringing honor back to F&I means we have to step it up. Right, we have to take F and I to the next level. F and I cannot be elusive. F and I cannot be the boogeyman. F and I cannot be the department or the manager that a customer sees at the very end. Right, we have to change that. We have to go out there and greet the customers. Right, when they're walking into the dealership, we have to go out and greet the customers. When they say hi to a salesperson, the next person they should say hi to is a finance manager. We have to go out there and talk where the customer is when they want to know about F and I issues. Right, how what's my rate? What kind of product? What kind of payment? What kind of term? What's my finance charge in comparison to credit unions? Which one of you guys are better? When they come up with these finance questions, listen, we should be ready available. The finance manager shouldn't have to be paged. The finance manager should be be right there. He should be right there being able to be waved over. Hey, hey, folks. Hey, hey, excuse me, Shaka. Can you come here for a second? Excuse me, Martha. Can you come here for a second? This customer has a question I think that pertains to the finance office, right? This, this is who we must be. Full disclosure, available to address customers' concerns and to show value to customers by rolling out the red carpet for them. Right. And to understand your product and to understand all the value that your product brings to the table. Listen, a menu can't do that for you. Stop listening to these people who come up with the with the 20th way to give you a menu presentation. Stop listening to them. Right. Stop it. You and I both know that customers buy value. They don't buy menus. Right. You leave a menu in Chili's, an Outback Steakhouse, right? You leave them in Steak and Shake, right? You don't bring them to an F&I department. Listen to me. A menu belongs where they're buying $5 and $20 and $30 plates, right? You want a $30 steak? Get it off of a menu, right? But a customer's purchasing a $35,000 vehicle. They shouldn't be obligated to stare at a doggone menu. They shouldn't be obligated to have to go down a list of stuff. Right. You should be able to present them with value to protect their asset that they just bought. You should be able to present them with enough value to protect themselves and protect their loan. Right. This is the honor. This is what you have to bring to the table, not a doggone menu and not a Colombo clothes. Right. And not being elusive. Right. We have to be up front. We got to change the way F&I is done. Come on. We got to change the way that it's done. That's the only way that we're going to bring honor back to it is if we change it. And listen to me. I don't care who gives you the pushback within your dealership. You have to take, take charge. You have to lead from the front, right? You know, you know the challenges that you have back in the F&I department. You know, you know the issues and the challenges and the resistances that we deal with back there. You know, you know how the bad reputation and the bad perception about F&I plays out in the F&I department. You know that no matter what time the customer comes into your office, you know that not, no matter how many people the, F, the customer walks into 
with that customer. You know that no matter when the salesperson comes back there and says, hey, uh, my customer's got to go. Don't, don't, don't try to sell them no stuff or they're going to blow out of here. You know that no matter what the situation is, no matter what the circumstance is, the minute you're done with that customer and you walk back out into that showroom, the first thing your GM is going to ask you is what? Hey, how'd you do? Hey, hey, how'd you do on that deal? Hey, what'd you make on that deal? Why? Because that is what matters. That's what counts to a GM. That's what counts to an owner. It's how much you made. And the only way that you're able to generate revenue in the F&I department is protecting the customer. It's protecting the customer. So you got to become great at protecting the customer. Right? You can't blame the customer for having for resisting your products. You can't blame the customer for not wanting to hear what your products are about. You can't blame the customer for objecting to your products. You can't blame the customer for coming back to your F&I department and saying, hey, I don't have enough time. I don't have any time to sit back here and listen to your stuff. You can't blame the customer. And the reason being is people like this are spewing the garbage all over YouTube. People like these national TV shows and these radio shows are fear-mongering with the customer. So the only thing the customer knows to do is, is to come back to your F&I department and say, hey, I don't have any time. The only thing that they know to do is to come back there and say, hey, nope, you know what? I don't have any time. Oh, that looks like a menu. Oops, I don't want to hear none of, none of this stuff on this menu. The last 19 times I bought a car, I saw this same menu. Nope, I don't want none of this stuff. Right. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. My kids are hungry. The, the dog hasn't been taken for a walk. I haven't been slip slip. I haven't slept since yesterday. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. I can always come back tomorrow. Right. These are they, these are their protective mechanisms. This is the only way that they know how to they, they know how to resist. Why? Why do they feel the need? Because people like this idiot are fear mongering and not telling customers the truth. We as F&I managers have to take the reins. We have to take the lead on this thing and we have to take F&I back. How many agree this morning? We have to take F&I back. Let me see the lights. Let me see the hearts. Let me see the lights and the hearts if you agree with me this morning. We got to take F&I back. We have to own F&I. Come on. We got to take it back from those who are out here fear-mongering. Come on. Let me see the lights and the hearts. Come on. We have to own this thing. We know how much value we bring to a customer, right? These people can't outdo us in F&I. We have to bring the honor back to it. Come on if you agree. I'm, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of us not getting our respect back in F&I, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of us not getting the credibility, the credible, the credibility that, that we're due, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of people like this spewing fear by giving customers misinformation, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of the bad process, the bad presentations in F&I, let me see the likes and the hearts. Come on. Come on. We got to sell value, y'all. A menu's not going to do it for you. We have to fully disclose and roll out a red carpet for customers. Come on. We got to we have to do the right thing by the F&I department. We were put in there for a reason. Right? There's a reason why the general manager put us in that position. Right? There's a reason why the owner agreed for us to be in that position so that we can protect customers and generate revenue for the department all at the same time. They didn't say, "Hey, I'm going to put you in there, and if the going gets rough, I, 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 I'm okay with you not generating any revenue. That's not what they said. They didn't say, hey, I'm going to put you back in that F&I department, and you know what? If, if the customers are listening to idiots that, that spew this negativity on the YouTube channel, or if they're listening to these shows that talk about, hey, don't buy your F&I products, listen, I, I understand why you're not selling them. Right. That's not what they say. What they say is, hey, I expect for you to take your F&I skills into my F&I department and take my F&I revenue to the next level and take protecting customers to the next level and protect and, and take customer satisfaction to the next level. Right. I want you to go in there, generate revenue, protect customers and keep customers happy. Right. By servicing them, by making sure that they're taken care of, by rolling out the red carpet for them. They didn't say, hey, the asterisk wasn't that that that's only if they don't watch the YouTube channel. 
That's only if they don't have the negative thoughts in their mind before they ever get to F and I. The asterisk isn't. That's only if they don't lose. Listen to Susie Orman and Dave Ramsey. They said, I'm hiring you and putting you into this office because you told me that you can make it happen. Whatever the circumstance is, you told me that you can make it happen. Right. So we have to deliver. We have to deliver on the promises that we gave the GM and the owners. And the only way that we can do that is not through a damn menu, but through skill set by rolling out the carpet, red carpet for customers and skilling up no matter how much the challenge is, no matter if it's a lease, no matter if they walk in with a credit union check. Right. No matter if they get outside financing, no matter if they walk in with greenbacks, straight cash in the suitcase. Listen, we have to be able to generate revenue. And the only way to do that is through your skill set. You have to skill up. That's the answer. You get it. You have to skill up. Right. No challenge. It's only a challenge until you skill up past the challenge. Understand that it's only a challenge until you skill up past it. Right. You couldn't drive a car at one time in your life. Right. Until you learned how to do it. You couldn't skate at one time in your life. Right. Until you learned how to do it. Some of you couldn't play pool at one time in your life. Right. Until you learned how to do it. Some of you couldn't swim in a pool until you learned how to do it. Some of you couldn't write in cursive until you learned how to do it. Some of you didn't know algebra until you learned how to do it. Some of you didn't know how to play chess until you learned how to do it. It's only a challenge until you skill up past it. Woo! Come on! Let me see them hearts and let me see them likes if you're feeling me this morning. It's up to you and me. We have to take charge of this thing. It's up to you and me. Right, People like this can't dominate us. We dominate them. F and I does not quit. We overcome. We rise to the challenge and we take it to the next level. Come on. <laughs> Woo! Come on. Let me see the hearts and the likes that you're feeling me this morning. Come on. Come on. Let me know if you, let me know in the comments if you're ready. I want you to type in, I'm ready. If you're ready to go to the next level, type in the comments, I'm ready. If you're ready to bring the honor back to F and I, type in the comments, I'm ready. If you're ready to take this thing to the next level, type in the comments, I'm ready. If you're ready to defend F and I against all comers, if you're ready to take on all challenges who talk down about F and I, Type in the comments, I'm ready. If you're ready to battle, if you're ready to stand up for F and I, if you're ready to take F and I in a new direction, type in the comments, I'm ready. Because I'm here for you. I got your back because guess what? I'm ready too. I'm ready too. That's why I bring you these messages every single week because I'm ready too. Right? We, we, you and me, together, we're ready. I'm ready for anybody. I'm ready for all our comers. I don't care who they are, right? Because we bring the value to a dealership. And I know, I know for a fact, we bring the value to the dealership. We are an asset to the dealership. Just like the salespeople are an asset, F&I managers are an asset. Just like the desk managers are an asset, F&I managers are an asset. Just like the GM is an asset, F&I managers are an asset, right? We have to stand up for F&I against everybody who's trying to kill us, everybody who's trying to kill F&I, we, you and me, have to be the one to stand up for it. Come on. Come on, y'all. Woo! I'm fired up this morning. I'm fired up. Listen, listen. If you guys aren't getting trained, if you guys aren't investing in yourself, if you guys aren't investing in yourself, if you're worried about the cost of what you pay for training versus the cost, what it will cost you if you don't get training, you're focused on the wrong thing. You got to, you got to focus on training, not focus on the cost. You got to focus on training. You got to focus on your skill set. You got to focus on building your F and I intellect and building your F and I muscle. Listen to me. You got to focus on getting to the next level. It's not about what you pay for training, but it's about what not getting trained can cost you. Understand that. Right. You can you can sit with your head in the sand like an ostrich, but that doesn't mean that the world of F and I is not evolving. What that means is, is that you're not evolving with it. If you have a checked out dealer F and I university, then you need to check it out. If you have a checked out F I F and I masterclass, then you need to check it out www.fimasterclass.com. You need to check it out. This is about you and me and bringing F&I to the next level. What are you waiting for? 
What is it? What pain do you need to feel from these idiots for you to decide that it's time to change it and take it to the next level? Who has to say what? Right? Who, who, who's the person that needs to say, who, who's the person that needs to bring the pain to us? Who's the next person that needs to make a dumbass YouTube video that misguide and mislead customers for you to say it's time to change? Come on, the number one FNI training platform in FNI, Dealer FNI University, conducted personally by the number one FNI trainer in the automotive industry, Shaka Dyson. Listen. I'm going to be live. I'm going to be live and in the flesh and in person November 6th and 7th in Indianapolis. All right. If you haven't already, please go and register for the FNI Masterclass. The FNI Masterclass. www.fimasterclass.com. And listen to me. If there's anyone, anyone watching this that I can help, if you need anything concerning FNI, don't matter what it is, please feel free to reach out to me. Right? That's another difference between Shaka Dyson and those other FNI trainers, right? Is I've not seen another FNI trainer say, hey, reach out to me, right? They all got their little platforms and they've been in the business, right? And they're different variation of menu selling, but none of them will say, hey, if you have an issue, reach out to me. Well, I'm inviting you. If you ever have an issue in FNI, please reach out to me. There's plenty of people on this call that know, man, if I run into a wall, if I run into a challenge in FNI, I can reach out to Shaka Dyson. Come on. So I'm inviting you guys to do that, all right? Listen, I appreciate you guys being on this call. I appreciate you guys being on this feed every week. Same time, same place. We're going to bring honor back to the FNI department deal by deal. Thank you guys so much for being on this call. I appreciate it. I appreciate you guys. Steven, thank you so much for being on this call. True story. Absolutely. I appreciate you guys. All right. Damien, appreciate you. Spencer, I appreciate you, champion. Thomas, I appreciate you. Joshua, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Bailey, I appreciate you being on here. I really do. I appreciate you. I appreciate all the love. I appreciate all the likes. And I appreciate every one of you in FNI because I know, I know the challenges that you face. And I'm here to help you through it. My name is Shaka Dyson. Thank you so much. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.